Lisa Joy, how are you? How are you doing? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. Listen, you might have one of the most innovative minds in the entertainment industry. This movie blew me away. Um, amazing, amazing job. I know this is your directorial debut, but where did the idea for Reminiscence come from? Uh, well, uh, I, I have to thank unemployment for <laughs> allowing it to happen. <laughs> I had a lot of free time. And during that free time, I got myself knocked up and had a lot of morning sickness and was writing between puking bouts. Um, and, you know, in, in all seriousness, though, it was the first time I was allowed to write in my own voice, really, because I'd been working for other lovely people before emulating and learning from their voices. Um, but something about being pregnant and all that anticipation, plus at that time, you know, my, my grandfather passed away and um sorry to when, hear that, by the way oh thank you no it was it was he he lived a long time and he lived a very full life but it, it unlocked a little mystery for me that that made me uh really contemplate memory uh because he has he had he lives in the north of england in this very modest house and he has this plaque on his house called Suki lin and he would never tell me what the name stood for but when i went there to kind of tidy up his belongings i found an old photograph that said Suki Lin on it. And I realized, oh, somewhere in the recesses of his mind, there was a memory in which she was very important. And just made me start thinking about how well do you know someone when every moment in their minds, every moment of memory is its own kind of bounded infinity, you know? Absolutely. One of the things I love about Reminiscence is that the film absolutely sticks with you and it has such a great rewatchability. And it kept me talking for like a week about the movie. I just kept thinking about it. Oh, but, that's uh, so cool. Thank actually, you. I, I know that uh, you wrote the character of Nick Bannister, Bannister for Hugh Jackman. We're not necessarily for Hugh Jackman, but you couldn't get him out of your head. What did Hugh bring to the role of Nick Bannister that wasn't necessarily on the page? Hugh is... He is so good looking that you almost don't notice that he is the consummate character actor. He really is. You know, it's like somebody forgot to tell him that he's good looking and he can take it easy the way that he commits to a role, you know, and has no vanity whatsoever. And for this film, from the very beginning, when I talked to him, I was like, you are a leading man and a hero. But this is an examination of a character in all his, you know, different aspects and the idea of what a man is and what a hero is. I think we have to look deeper than that. We have to say, you're not perfect, that you can be vulnerable, that you can pine, that you can be blind, that you can cry, that you can hurt and, and that you can be wrong. You can do right. evil things. You can find yourself the villain of your own story. I'm like, we need to tell a story that really almost deconstructs what a traditional hero is supposed to be. And I knew that for that kind of nuance and 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 you know an, an update on traditional male hero tropes, somebody as daring and lovely as Hugh would be the ultimate collaborator. Absolutely. Now, one thing that I don't want to go overlooked here is the technology used for this because it blew my mind. Hugh told me about it and I didn't know. I thought it was all CG, but can you talk to me about the technology here a little bit that you're using in this film? Yeah, I mean, when, when we started the film, um, I knew I wanted the memories that he saw in this hologram to be done in camera, you know? And we've seen beautiful depictions of holographic images before in film. And you basically, it, a lot of it is VFX, you know, when right. you look from one plane. But what I wanted to do was to dimensionalize it and to make it so that Hugh's performance could be very realistic and visceral and he could actually see a real hologram while he was acting. And so the way that we did that was we basically created the circular viewing podium that he uses and every memory that he saw, we had to film in advance. And it was this intricate dance because we didn't have fancy techno cranes and stuff. This is a original film. They don't, they, they give that to the Marvel movies. And uh, <laughs> so we had to, we had to, I had to kind of intuit where Hugh would go and what the character would do and where he would look and the pace at which he would approach and circle uh, these images. And then my amazing Steadicam operator, Chris Harhoff, um, 
he would basically be Bannister's gates. We would look at, okay, well, Bannister's six foot two, his eyes are here. So he would go this way, he would walk closer. He would dip down to look under the bureau. He would go this way. And I would hold on to his jacket behind him. And I would walk imagining that I was Hugh Jackman. Um, and then later, uh, Hugh would also intuitively kind of flow through the scenes and it all ended up kind of, it was like a dance done through time with different partners who were imaginary. And, and we would project the memories that we filmed in advance onto the screen and Hugh would be able to see them uh, as he walked uh, and, and the memory dimensionalized. That is incredible. And I cannot wait to see this movie again. And, and I guarantee everybody's going to be talking about it because it, it stays with you. It absolutely stays with you. But Lisa, thank you so much for your time. I honestly, I truly appreciate it. Thank you. Oh, thank you. It was lovely chatting with you. you too. Take care.